Hello, my name is Joan Walsh and welcome to my channel. And I am going to talk about Irish water and the Irish water charges. I'll just do a brief video. I'm going to be doing it on memory of when our government tried to bring in water charges for our national water a few years ago. Now, um, there's some great orators out there on YouTube land and I'll just try as best I can to tell my own story on it in case they try their little trick again on bringing in water charges. So, um, back a number of years ago, what year was it? 2015? No, it wasn't 2015, it was before that. 2014. And they were implementing the water charges and that we'd have to pay for our national tap water and that we'll have to put up with having um, digital M M AMR meters put instead of our analog meters um, every house. I think the government got them second hand somewhere and they cost millions. So I for one was not happy about this. Why? Because A, our national water is fluoridated. It is poison. And it is policy of the government since 1964. So it took a whole load of fluoride into every water treatment um, in the country. Um, I've mentioned already in a video, I do not drink nor cook with fluoridated tap water for the last 12 and a half years. So if you want to do research on fluoridated water, please look up the work of Declan War, that's W-A-U-G-H excellent research he's done he's a scientist and also a great activist um, against fluoridation of the national water is Ashling Fitzgibbon the girl against fluoride so I won't go into the details of um, our fluoridated national water but everybody should at this stage be well aware residents citizens tourists our water is not safe to drink and the company that supplies the fluoride to put into our water treatments um, facilities around the country is Chemifluc and they are based down in Shannon and they bring the fluoride to every treatment centre. Anyway, so, so here is the government back in 2014 saying that we have to pay for this poisoned water. I don't think so. And everybody seemed to think, oh, well, we just have to pay because otherwise they'll cut, it, cut us off. And there was a threat of them cutting off your water. The fact of the matter is, um, how do I word this? Because it's, it's worded elsewhere, somewhere else, you know, in a letter and other people are much better at talking about the, the consent behind it. Um, it's confusing for me to explain it, but put it this way, somebody very intelligent out there, thankfully, put a let, letter together of no consent to be sent to Paul Tierney, who was the head of the Irish War at the time. I was very grateful that I could find this letter, and I'm very grateful that the person took the time to write, to put it together. Because I think most of us have a problem with writing, putting all the facts together in a letter and sending it to our uh, those in authority to say, we're not happy about this. We seem to like to just lie down and accept. Well, no, don't lie down and accept. So anyway, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm doing a memory here and, you know, I'm trying to give it some welly. Uh, so I downloaded that letter and um, signed it and sent it to Paul Thierry to make it noted that I was not giving my consent for them to put an AMR meter outside 
the rental house I was in. Great. So I did that. When I got their, what would you call it, their bill or their, you know, basically if you, you know, accepted or signed off on their letter that they sent you, that means you were giving your consent. So it was really important a, not to open the letter, and if you did, just seal it back up again. And on the back, right, send back to sender, and no consent. That's all you have to do, post it back. So it was lots of people around here doing that, but not as many as there should have been. Also, it was important to put a notice up in your window. Now, for me personally, I was in a rented house that had just gone under receivership. That's another story about landlords, receivership, the vulnerability as a renter in a property. Unbelievable. So um, I don't know if I can put that into a story, but I might do as information. So in some ways, for me, because the, the house that had been privately owned had just gone into receivership and was owned by the bank, who couldn't give a damn what the tenant was doing because there was a you know a termination notice and they were genuinely going to be selling the house because the banks wanted to get back their money. I had a window of opportunity to um, put up notices in my window. Now I will add photographs to this video to show uh, what I put up in my windows. Of course, I felt as if I was like the mad one on the block, the mad blow in from Dublin on the block. Some neighbours gave me funny looks, and probably still give me funny looks if I was still living there. But, you know, I was making a stand. And then, funny enough, also where I lived, um, even though it was a private, private residency, um, the locals would come and park there when they were going to Mass. So my house was perfectly positioned on a corner, front window, the kitchen window, a lane, and they would um, park the cars and they'd walk past my window and see these notices from this crazy single Irish, you know, Dublin woman living there. So the good advertisement, I was trying to do my bit. You know, I was on my own, where I lived was in a small town in County Leitrim. And um, I was doing my bit. Uh, later on, actually I had a conversation with, there was another Dublin woman living in the estate. And she'd been away when the, the water meter lads arrived. And she said, I wish I'd known something, there was a disconnect. Anyway, she wished she'd known. But she gave the lad who was putting in the meter a good talking to. And even the guy then showed her how to remove the meter, which is really cool, actually. But meanwhile, up in Dublin and elsewhere, mainly people from the working class, good on them, um, who just put their foot down and had protests in Dublin, in their housing estates. They made a stand, they got their chairs out and sat and put in the time, put in the effort to fight this because they knew what their rights were. Um, so anyway, I don't know when particularly when I put that letter in to Paul Tierney. Come July of 2014, the fateful day, the van arrived with the two lads. Now, two lads just doing a job. Yeah, just doing a job. So I kind of went, I've got to go out and talk to them. So I went out. First thing the guy said to me was, oh, we won't be putting the meter in your house because of the notice in your window. I could not believe my ears. Something worked. So then I talked to him about the fluoridation and the AMR meters. Now, I've done my research as best as I could on AMR meters, and it seems the frequencies coming off them was the equivalent of 180 mobile phones going off every minute or second. I can't remember the details, but not good. 
And I don't consent to that. You know, um, I just use a button phone. I only use, use a wired broadband connection. I don't need the equivalent of 180 mobile phone pieces going through my kitchen window into my house. I don't consent. So that was good news anyway that the guys weren't putting in the meter. And on they go and they do the rest of the meters up. Every single house in the housing estate I was in, a new meter was put in. So unfortunately because my local community didn't cop on, and I think I probably put in a notice into every door, I can't remember. Um, or maybe I didn't because I didn't feel as if I get support or something. So I all I could do was put it into my window on the side about girl gets fluoride and also my no consent notices in the front window. And because I didn't have a landlord other than a bank who didn't give a shit and um, I didn't get bothered. So it was kind of a good thing in a way that uh, the house had gone into receivership, otherwise I wouldn't have made my stand. I wouldn't have, because a landlord would have come round and said, what are you doing, put a nose up in your window. So, you know, this was this, yeah. So that was July, and I stayed on in the house until November 2014. And I checked the meter. And in all that time that I lived there, Never uh, was an AMR meter put in there. It remained the same analog meter that had been there when the housing estate was built. But now I have to go back. So the two lads came, did all the meters in the vicinity and the town. And uh, the next day, must have been the next day, I'm walking up the housing estate with some shopping. And I can see two guys with high vase jackets, higher up lads, heading towards my door. And so here we go. Here's the intimidation. Send in the higher lads, you know, to talk to this girl, you know. So to be honest, I was scared because I had to make a stand. So I went up to the the house and um, I probably didn't open the door. I, anyway, I talked to them and one of the guys had two pieces of paper, a couple of pieces of paper from their website explaining about the MR, M, I keep saying it wrong, AMR meter and of course that's a tactic. Don't ever take a piece of paper off anybody because it's consent by doing that. So I said to him, one of the things I said was, if you can send me the peer review, I tried to, you know, use any old language, you know, uh, peer review scientific research on AMR meters in the post, I'll be happy to read it. I talked about fluoridated water and they tried to say, oh, it's unmandatory. And I said, you know, how did I say, I talked about with you. You think about the man who's died from cancer due to fluoridated water. You know, or somebody who's had neurological problems because of fluoridated water. However way I worded it, you know, is my point is I do not consent to paying for poisoned water. And I do not consent to an AM or meter outside my house. That's it. So they could make this paper at me and, you know, try and get me to take accept the piece of paper. But I didn't accept the piece of paper. I put it to them. You send me the peer review, scientific reports on that meter, and I'll be happy to read it. So they went away. Never darkened my door again. And then I moved, and then I moved again. Where I live now, I have, there is an AMR meter outside, and I could get a meter fairy, 
there's meter fairies, or there was meter fairies around Ireland taking them out. But um, I haven't done that. What was the uh, point? So, anyway, if the government starts this act again with charging for water, and um, you need to know, people need to know their rights of no consent. And there's other experts who can verbally talk about this and put it into words exactly why. Um, I, I saw a report there just recently that the ESB is starting to put in smart meters and they're starting down in County Cork um, to put smart meters in, to change all the analog meters where you get a man who goes round every couple of months and takes um, a visual uh, reading, or he has a little machine, but he, he physically comes around, opens up your box and reads your meter. And that's a good thing. Instead, they want to put in a smart meter. And they're probably going to sell it that it's really smart. When you see the word smart, it means stupid. It means not smart. It means saving money. It means technology that shouldn't be here. I won't go into all that. So, they will try to pull the next one with the ESP with these smart meters. And they don't have a right. They don't have a right to put a smart meter into your home, onto the side of your home, to put your home and the people within that home at risk. So please, please research. I know on es-ireland.com website, if you go there and you click on Ireland or there's a tag there that says uh, there's a letter you can download for no consent to ESB smart meters. And that's a job to do, I have to do at some point. And I wish you wouldn't have to, you know, do these things, you know, just, you know, you're getting on with your life as best you can, and then you've got to defend yourself. So, but the more people that take action, um, know their rights, um, the better. And maybe one day, we won't have fluoridated water in this country. We shouldn't have to have fluoridated water, um, poisonous water. Um, you know, since 1964, it's too long. It's been too long. And there's too many scientific studies just, you know, about about the da damage and the, you know, the dangers of this fluoridation water. Before I start going on about Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, I sure might as well mention them, you know, despots, who didn't look after the citizens of their country. And that's what we have. Same situation in modern day life. So uh, I'll finish off there. And that's about my personal story about Irish water and um, the water charges. And I am grateful that all the people who protested, all the people who sat outside their homes, I mean, good on them. In my little corner, I did my thing, and my neighbour from Dublin, who went and bravely talked to the, she was against it, and she wished she had known to put the notice in her window, but still, she made a stand off the wrong bat to go and talk to the meter man while he was putting in the meter. You know, it's very brave and uh, yeah okay thanks for listening good luck see you